is actually a double whammy of a prop for today's video because it applies to the topic we're going to discuss and I should probably apply some to myself. So recently I watched this movie. Great movie by the way, highly recommend you check it out after this video. But when I was looking for a place to watch this movie, the only place I could find it was a streaming service called Tubi. We interrupt this program to bring you a brief streaming service rant. Tubi is the most disappointing, decrepit streaming service I have ever had the displeasure of using. I recently got a new TV, right? Pretty cool. A little soundbar and everything. But Tubi only lets you watch certain titles on the television version of their app. So the only way I could watch this movie was to sit there like an actual dunce and try to cram a film intended for a giant theater screen into my eyes through a tiny phone. The one benefit to come out of discovering my new arch nemesis is that Tubi is like the king of low budget B movies. There are even some old classics on there like Free Runner, which I talked about in an older video, link in the description. And I ended up in an endless scroll of perfect candidates for a video like this until one tagline just jumped out at me. Paybacks in itch. <laughs> come on, what is that? Have you ever wondered what would happen if some scientist decided he just had to be the guy to discover the vaccine for some deadly mosquito virus? So he takes some uh, mosquito DNA and injects it into some poor, down on his luck sad sack who just so happened to have been working with nuclear radiation for years, accidentally turning him into a mosquito man, hellbent on getting revenge against all those who have wronged him? No? Oh. Well, here's a mosquito man on Tubi, but I recommend you have some bug spray because this movie bites. We open, of course, with loads and loads of credits because who wouldn't want their name associated with a blockbuster hit like this before revealing a little taste of what's to come with a woman being saved from some muggers by what looks to be some sort of mosquito man. I guess it makes sense why they called him that then, because, you know, he's a mosquito man. But let's back up a bit and establish some of the details of the world in which this mosquito man resides. It appears as though there's some sort of <coughs> global pandemic, <coughs> can't relate, a mosquito virus going around that's just ravaging the population. It's as if every drop of hemoglobin has been siphoned from their bodies. Globalism. That's impossible. There wasn't a drop of blood at the scene. I said every drop was siphoned from them. I didn't say it was splattered all over the street. Do you mind? You're telling me we got a freak, some kind of vampire out there running around killing people? If it were vampires, they'd have two puncture wounds each. I like how he doesn't even acknowledge whether or not vampires exist. He's just like, well, if it was vampires, we would know. There's, they got the two holes in the neck. Do what? Oh, you're so naughty. Honey? Um, Mom, I gotta go. Jim's awake. Bye. You've been at the plant for 10 years now. You're more likely to die of radiation poisoning than ever get promoted. Good old Jimbo carries on his work at this nuclear plant just to find out that his wife was right and he will not be getting that promotion, but rather is fired and replaced by a robot. And because he is no longer an employee, his car is towed and impounded. Simmons. If you were going to have an affair, why on earth would you do it at a motel within walking distance of where your husband works and leave all of your clothes and ID out in front of the window so that he can walk by and see it, or anybody really? Also, why is he so shocked to find out that his wife is cheating on him? She was doing it on the phone in front of him with little to no shame earlier. <laughs> Oh, how horrifying. I just found out my wife is cheating on me with the man who got me fired. Give me a second to walk all the way from the motel where I found them into the city just so I can throw up in a dumpster in an alley. God, are you alright? Hey, pal. 
You need a doctor? You want me to take you to the hospital? I lost my job, my car, my wife. And if you hadn't stopped my life all on the same day. The name's Dave. Jim. Why is this scene so wet? It's like they filmed it in the splash zone of the Waterworld show at Universal Studios. Jim, you're safe now. And I know exactly what you need. <laughs> no, my weary friend. I will not let you die by jumping in front of my car. Come, drink yourself to death on my tab instead. This was not worth it. The Center for Disease Control has confirmed that as of yet, oh, there is no vaccine. At least you have your health, right? You're right, Dave. Here's to my health. Ooh. You uh, want me to call a cab? No. I'll take care of him. If two guys walk in and you can tell clearly from their conversation that they don't know each other, why would you let the one guy take care of the drunk, nearly dead guy? Especially when he says it the way this guy does, practically licking his lips with anticipation. But we haven't even tested the vaccine on chimpanzees, let alone a human being. Great men require sacrifice. Everything goes to plan, he'll make history and we'll be rich. What if it doesn't? No one will miss him. And give me the serum. So the serum fails, Jim gets bit, and Dr. Evil throws a little tantrum. Damn. Damn, damn, damn! Calm down. Look, we are so close. Close? Close, Barry? No. We're getting close to getting all of our funding pulled if we can't pull this thing off. That's how close we are, Barry. Yeah, Barry, you stupid idiot. And even more unfortunate, old Jim Crawley has a bad reaction to the serum bite combo and ends up just dying right out. He's dead. So as is typical when disposing of a body from a failed experiment, they dump Jim into a pile of trash in an alleyway. Moving along so we can get this over with, some muggers chase down Jim's old co-worker and secret love interest, Evelyn, and by pure coincidence, it happens to be right near where Jim was left. Let's go. Did he hurt you? Are you okay? I'm sorry, what about this disgusting green monster tells her that this is Jim right away? Is it the robe? No, it can't be the robe. He wasn't wearing one of those earlier. Ah, uh, you know what? It's the tongue. It's so much worse that he has just a little bit of hair left. Like, he's not just a mosquito man. He has to be this sleazeball, greasy mosquito guy with a comb over that hangs out at the laundromat all the time. Old Jimbo heads home and grabs himself a brew and decides it's high time to use his new, very long tongue on his unbearable wife. But not in the way you're thinking. So, Sleeping Beauty decided to join us, huh? I'm sorry? Mind telling me what happened in that alleyway? I'm not quite sure. Why don't you give it a shot? Man, what is Officer Ted Grizzly from Hoodwink doing interrogating this poor girl in a hospital? Bowen. Okay. We got another one. Where? 1440 Summerdale. That's Jim's house. Who's Jim? I'll tell you in the car. Uh, still not quite sure why I'm here, sir. To rule out the possibility the mosquito did that. Ah, the age-old story. Your wife cheats on you, so you become a hybrid human mosquito and suck the blood out of her. That would have to be a pretty big mosquito. How big? I don't know, the size of a man? So you're saying we're looking for a mosquito man? Roll the credits. Tell me, Doc, this has nothing to do with a six-foot bug, so I can move on to the other SOB who did this. Well, my initial tests have produced the mosquito protein. You got to be kidding me. 
until you show me a six-foot bug, this Jim Crawley guy's our main suspect. Jim who? Is that our lover boy? Yeah, that's him. There's your mosquito. Oh no, that's that guy I killed. Fuck, I guess he's a big old bug now. Whoopsie. <laughs> no, I have not been drinking, Barry. He's not here. And you know why? Because he's turned into some giant mosquito blood-sucking maniac! He worked at some nuclear research plant. I don't know, Barry. Maybe the radiation somehow scrambled his DNA. Somehow the... Mosquito cells from the vaccine fused with his genetic code. I don't know, Barry. Maybe I can explain to you exactly what happened and what we have to do. Almost as if the writers made it too obvious. So now Jim's headed back to his old workplace to get revenge on the guy who towed and impounded his car. I think I'm going to have to write you another ticket! Ah! I really don't know what to think. Can't be that difficult. You're standing a six-foot mosquito. I don't follow you. What do you mean, my mosquito? It's a figure of speech. Yeah, copy that. Fitzgerald's dead. Same MO. Jeez, man, do you have to slam the brakes like that? You got a passenger back here, man. Have some common decency. That's our bug. That's our guy. Our suspect. Our suspect. Go, 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 go. I love that they included that dramatic three-point turn. Like, yeah, chase him down, we're cops, let's go get him. Uh, hold on, let me just uh, break and then, uh, alright, off we go. So the cops chase Jim for a bit. Meanwhile, Evelyn plays some classic nude guitar, which, I, I mean, that's a must-have. Look at the past ten Best Picture winners. They've all got that. You gotta have that in there. Uh, and eventually, the cops catch Jim in a roadblock. Don't move, Jim! Now let me see those hands! Oh, I forgot. Uh, apparently, because he's, you know, half mosquito DNA, aside from the green skin, tongue, and ability to drain the blood from people, uh, he can just summon hordes of mosquitoes at will. And without any prompting, he just knew he could do that. Detective Grizzly runs and jumps at Jim, but the bug man just disappears into thin air. No, when I, I tried to grab him, that's what he said. I'm sorry, but I need to eat. He could have killed me right there. Sucked me dry as a bone. Again with this man? Like, who, who taught you how to drive? Helen Keller? Is that too far? Jim? I mean, I know they kind of had a thing for each other, but... To just climb in through the window like that, I mean, it, it, it's hardly consensual. I have dreamed about this for so long. I mean, I imagined it would be somewhat different, but... Yeah, usually when I imagine this, you were, uh, you know, not a mosquito man. Uh, more like a cicada? I'm really into the screaming. The cops search the place, but of course find no signs of their mesquite friend, and Evelyn tips them off that Jim's next victim is probably going to be Simmons, the guy who caused him to be fired and cheated with his wife. Meanwhile, Dave sneaks off and hatches a plan to try and stop Jim from coming after him. We have to stop this Jim guy before he takes us down. I've got an idea. Somebody's being a bad boy. That's mighty nice of you. Bloody more where that came from. I'm sorry. Mosquito experts, please sound off in the comments, but 
I'm pretty sure mosquitoes can't smell that a person left their apartment through the door and track them down to another location. Anyway, Jim tracks him down and crosses his name off the list as well. Hey guys. Oh, Shanahan sent us over to swab for some samples. Uh-huh. Science stuff. <laughs> Sorry. I know Dave and Barry are probably carrying some vials of poison or a tranquilizer or something, but I gotta say, these seem like the worst cops for this job. Good old boss man goes to take a dump and gets dumped, bringing Jim's total death tally thus far to six. I'm a little confused because it, it feels like they want you to be on the side of Jim, but he's really gross now and he's kind of just killing people left and right. Even, even if they did wrong him, it's still definitely illegal and possibly immoral. Look tight, boss. Head home. Get some sleep. Me and the boys will wrap it up. How can I sleep with a homicide happening every five minutes? I need a drink. Give us a couple bodies straight up. You got it. No. No sleep. We have got to solve this case. But, uh, you know, I'll take some beers and vodka, though. That, that sounds great. Hey, I know that guy. In tonight's top story, we learned through a confidential source that, that Dr. David Myers of Vanguard Pharmaceuticals could reap hundreds of millions from lucrative contracts. Hey, who let you in here? Get. Oh, he's a really great guy. He was just in here helping out some poor bastard. Lost his job, lost his wife, his car. Dave must have bought him ten drinks. Ten, ten drinks? I wish I was there. Calm down there, Topher Grace. Your drunk acting is harder to look at than the mosquito monster in this movie. Jim returns to Evelyn's apartment to find her missing while the science boys begin to construct their trap for the bug man. Yeah. I don't want to kill anymore. Jim, I believe you. Look, you have to turn yourself in. Jim, look, we know everything. Stay put, we're gonna come pick you up. Jim. Jim. Ah, the classic, don't hang up the phone when you leave, just gently put it down cliche. You know what it's like to be unappreciated? Is that what this is about? Your ego? That enriches beyond your wildest imagination. Now give me the syringe. You don't have to do this. Too many people have already died. She's right, Dave. It's gotta stop. Look, look I got a wife and kids. I, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. Yeah, Barry, now was the time to back out. Nope, oh, uh, just kidding. Looks like you're dead, so. Damn it. Yes? Dave, it's Shanahan. Welcome to the party, gentlemen. Boy, step back! Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how bulletproof glass works. Giant bug zapper. Uh, sir? Listen, Dave, I'm talking directly to you now. It's honestly pretty impressive you managed to scrounge all this together in just a matter of hours. I feel like you could use this talent and skill in another profession, something other than being a murderer slash vaccine scientist. Just when all hope is lost, it turns out Barry is just fine because the serum doesn't actually kill you, and he turns off the bug zapper, saving the day. No! Take care of her. Jim, I want to thank you for what you did for me back there, and I still gotta take you in. I can't let that happen. Damn it! Let's go! It's so funny that he doesn't stand out of the way and just lets all the debris fall on him. I'll jump. I'm warning you, I'll jump! Go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. I might catch you halfway down, though, and suck your brain right out of your skull for good measure. You need me. I can make you human again. I can do it. You and Evelyn can live a normal life. How can I live a normal life? With the memory of what I've done, tell him I used to be a good man. Tell who? It's summertime!
No, f- for real. Who am I supposed to be telling? You can't just yell, it's supper time, and not answer my question. He's gone. I can feel it. It's all right. You can come down and visit. No, is this movie for real? She's actually pregnant with a mosquito baby? Is this a real movie somebody made or just a bad fan fiction? I honestly have no idea how they want you to interpret that ending. I mean, it, is Evelyn just gonna give birth to a weird moth creature? Are they just gonna let Jim run around the city and satiate his hunger killing people? I have so many questions and I don't even want the answers. Also, if you had any doubt that this was a top tier quality film, I'd like to point out to you that the ending credits are in Comic Sans. So that was A Mosquito Man, uh, one of the great titles available on my newest muse, Tubi. It's eerily similar to a 2005 movie called Mansquito, but I did not watch that movie, so I cannot for sure say that they are all that similar. Yeah, but I mean, that's, uh, that's all I got for you, so, you know, hope you're in enjoying your summer, hope you enjoyed this part of your summer. If you did, you should go ahead and like. You can go ahead and leave a like, maybe a nice comment. That'd be nice of you as well. Or, you know, go outside. You got plenty of options. I'm just, you know, I'm just listing them for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Smoke.